Hey guys, it's Liat and Casey, and we are here with episode 156. Casey, what do you have for us today? All right, 156, 156. Hey, did your supervision suck? Well, guess what? We're going to make it sick. Good, I like that. Sick and six, six. I'd be like, we're going to teach you all the tricks. Whatever, she still can't rhyme. Okay, nothing's <laughs> changed. But before we go any further today, I just like every now and then like to give a little bit of an update on our life, like where we are, what we're doing. I like to pretend everyone cares. So with that, uh, Casey and I have had quite a week. Quite a week. Um, That's an understatement. That is an understatement. Casey and I went to couples therapy on, <laughs> I'll just get right to it, on Tuesday, Tuesday night. Uh, we did. It wasn't intended to be that. Like, it was like, so when I was going through my divorce a while ago, Casey came with me to my session one time because I was like, I need you to hear like what she's like, because sometimes you can't hear it yourself when you're in the emotional place, right? And then, so I offered Casey the same to go to her therapy session because Casey and I were like, I know we seem perfect to everyone on the outside world, which like we are, but... We were going through like a rough patch. Like, yeah. I, I would say um, to sum it up, it's like you're I depressed. Well, yeah. I get it. I know, literally. <laughs> My last one's not working. I'm depressed. Um, no, I think that there, like, when you make so many changes at once, many variables, and then you expect something that's different than when you like when it, you make all the changes, you're like what like did I just ruin everything and like our friendship and everything now that we're in person because the expectations were so high that you're like oh when I come to visit it's fun because we're you know doing like fun things but then we stopped doing everything fun together and we were trying again to- she is depressed so literally to get her to leave our house it's really hard. is part of the variable yep and so it was just like very work heavy and that's not how we run SNABA for our whole life. It's been not. very friendship and then we get our work done. And when you're not having that friendship is what is the magic of the company, everyone feels it. Like things aren't getting done. You're, you know, feeling stuck and paralyzed. But like it's work like, heavy, but also like not productive. Right, right. Like like, like doing things like, like in a, not like a slaying. Yeah. Like doing just like the maintenance, but not the, the vision and the dreams. Um, which... So, and then when you don't communicate, and I'm a, a big guilty person in this, is that I put up a defense and I'm like, I'm good. What do you mean? And then I get cold and like, d- like, bleh, eh, and then it's like immediately, like, you're going to be like, okay, Casey. And then if I just say how I'm feeling, we always work it out. So, anyways, yes, we had, <laughs> like, we're literally like, we had couples therapy and it was really wonderful. We had dinner before together on a bench. So you obviously listen to the, <laughs> the, 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 you're like, okay, so I'm just going to talk about it. That, so that was a big thing. I have told Casey from the beginning, which she has gotten so much better. I mean, I'll take blame in it too. I'm not saying, but thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> um, from the beginning of the podcast, like Casey used to start off every podcast with how perfect her life was. And like we used to have talked about this podcast has been going on what now four years? Almost five. Almost five. Yeah. And I'd be like, dude, you know no one cares whether your like life is perfect or not. Like and so it's like, like you got tra- much better. Yeah. It's like a trauma yeah. thing where it's like even my sister, so my sister and I have had a really hard relationship with her addiction and you know, we're just very different people. But since I've moved here, we've gotten closer. I think the distance has had me feel safer with a boundary that you know I'm not five minutes from her I'm a plane ride which so we can talk on the phone more and the first time I opened up to her about my feelings she's like wait what you come off like you're perfect on everything that you do I feel like shit because like if I'm going through something I don't want to share it with you and I'm like oh my god like I'm starting to realize that just saying like oh my god I'm so depressed I'm struggling made our relationship even closer. Yeah. <laughs> Light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um the no, energy- once you told me she was depressed, I'm like, cool. <laughs> we have we haven't even started intervention yet. Let's see what we could do. I was Let's like, be- when I say I don't want to come or I cancel, it's not because I'm like out doing other things. I'm literally in bed. 
with a pillow over my head and like watching Gilmore Girls on rerun because it's like a safety show. And so I know myself, I'm not doing the things I love doing, finding joy in things. But for announcement, we did spin yesterday. Casey and I took a spinning class. We did. And fun fact about me is I used to be a certified spin instructor and it was one of the happiest times of my life. And I think that um, my passion project to do at like 6 a.m. is going to apply to be a spin instructor because I love being motivational. I love choreography and dancing and like... And she loves competing. I know, except I got last place in class yesterday and I think I'm going to have to address this with the app. Yeah. Oh my God. Cycle bar. I was definitely number one in that class. There's no doubt about it. I was like petrified (laughs) when I was like four ahead of her. I'm like... I like tried acting like I didn't see it. I like, know you kept looking away from the screen. And I, was I like, look at it and like I acknowledge that like I'm in a higher place in her because like <laughs> I'm not competitive in those things. So I'm literally just like I told the class last night in the collective. I was like when I saw that I was ahead of Casey, I literally started literally backpedaling. Like can I take <laughs> can I take back these RPMs that are like keeping score because I know Casey inside is legit. Which hence the reason she threw up after class. She for sure got so competitive there and was like. <laughs> but anyways, all right. PB and J, but that's also really important to share. So you guys know where we're at in our lives and we keep it real here. Um, and I know you guys want us to stay friends. So we keep doing this podcast. So we'll keep going to couples therapy. We'll keep going couples therapy. <laughs> All right. Let's get into some reinforcement. All right. Yeah, we need it. Seriously. Okay. We got a new review. So Choo-choo. 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 91. Applying concepts is hard. Love the show. Got my hours. Got my degree. Still trying to pass the exam. Hashtag hardest test of my life. I'm still having a hard time applying concepts to everyday life, but this podcast has been so helpful. So thank you both and your guests for helping me and your viewers apply ABA concepts to everyday life. Thank you. That's the goal. Thank you. Of course. And if you like these visuals um, and applying this stuff and to think about it, that is, by the way, the, the podcast I think we do just for fun, but that is uh, where we spend the majority of our time teaching classes how to pass the ABA exam. So you should definitely check that out on studynotesaba.com. If you think we're funny here, Whoa. wait until you get it. Wait before, <laughs> until you get behind the paywall. All right. So. <laughs> Without further ado, we have a special guest who has been very patient with us. All right. So very special girl. Her name is Angie Pickering. She is a board certified behavior analyst. She specializes in um, naturalistic developmental behavior intervention with a strong focus on pivotal response treatment, which can't wait for you to tell us about. She has over a decade in the field of applied behavior analysis She has excelled in early intervention, working both in-home, clinic settings, school, and residential settings. She herself was a non-traditional student and did not become a BCBA until 2018. Fun fact, we were both in the same collective. We'll talk about that in a second. Who knew? Um, In addition to her professional accomplishments, Angie is a devoted wife and mother to a toddler son. She and her family call Portland, Oregon. Oregon, Oregon, bro. (laughs) I corrected. Oregon, their home. <laughs> Angie's commitment to creating positive change extends from her personal life to her current and innovative project, which is what we're talking about today. If you didn't get my rhyme, we're going to be talking about supervision. Supervision, supervision is that you have to acquire when you're going through your master's program as a BCABA or BCBA candidate. And as collective teachers for the past five years, which is a t- our test prep, I think the majority um, of complaints that we get is it's definitely not about our program. <laughs> yeah, no. No, definitely not. But it's, ah, oh, help. I'm not getting good supervision. Um, I feel like I know nothing. All my hours are effed up. Yeah, I don't know how to document my shit. My supervisor's too busy. Um, I'm learning nothing on my master's program. So many things, but a lot of it is supervision. And what Liat has, you know, kind of become her like slogan when someone says that is, you're not special. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, <laughs> no, I do. I, 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 unfortunately. And why do you say that? 
I do say with supervision always, I'm like, when someone comes like, hey, you know, am I the worst one? My Or my grad school program sucked. I'm like, I really don't mean this in a rude way. No offense, but you're not special. Meaning like you are not the first time. And, and it's unfortunate that you're not special because right. it's not the first time I've heard that. But that brings me back as to why our guest today is, well, she's also special on like a human level. Yes. Um, Just That's like kind, her. kind, kind. <laughs> But also um, special and like that she decided to go into this area that people are scared to go into, which is supervision. So Angie, welcome. Thank you. So happy to be here. Sorry, we peanut butter and jelly a little bit. We got excited. It's okay. We just feel comfy. I feel like very like yeah. giggly, like watching the two of you. You just, you have me having all the happy feels. Oh, good. Because we haven't for the past week. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just I I I love a good vulnerable moment and I appreciate the two of you being so transparent on shit, life's hard and working together. It's hard. Having a business is hard and you're doing the thing. A lot of things. So, hey, good job to you for showing up to that couple How therapy. It. That's right, baby. Well, I was supposed to be like telling her what problems she needs to be working on with the therapist and then it became couple therapy. <laughs> I was like, okay, this, you can talk about this. And then I was like, whoa, 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 <laughs> this whoa. This is not why I came. <laughs> okay, so first of all, Angie, the other day we were, we have been working closely with Angie and she's going to talk about what she's been yeah. creating. But the other day, Angie, like, threw a surprise on us and it was like, we were, I don't know, we just were talking like, well, like, when did we meet? And I was thinking totally different. Um, and then Angie was like, like casually said, oh, I was in the collective. I was like, wait, you were a student? She's like, yeah. And then she said, I was in Casey's collective. And I'm like, oh, Casey was your teacher? She's like, no, we were both <laughs> students in your class, Liat. That's so crazy. And I was like, I was like, whoa, yeah. because first of all, I have been a BCBA much longer than me. You give off like great vibes. Oh, thanks. Second of all, I was just like, it was such a tiny, you, you were like, studying this was nothing. Mm -hmm. a, a literal piece of post-it that I'd like hold up to the screen. And she'd be like in Israel teaching at like 4 a.m. I still thought you were the shit though. You did? Yeah, I did. Oh, I mean, good. that's why I work. <laughs> we started together, but yeah. So like. We've come a long way, but Andrew said that. I'm like, you were in my class. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. Well, and I think, and wow. I know that I, we kind of talked about this then, but I, I just like really resonated with um, your own personal story, Leah, of around just like health and like studying for the exam and like your life just getting in the way and your health getting in the way. I, while in grad school, um, was in a really bad car accident and got a brain injury. And that like postponed me studying for the exam after, after I had finished grad school by like a year and a half. And I realized when I started studying for the exam of like, oh, my brain does not work the way that it used to work pre-accident. And so I basically went to the collective with the hope that like, any knowledge that I was needing to kind of reteach myself because of my brain injury, you were going to be my girl. And hey, passed on the first go. Um, and honestly, I think that it was this journey of like, I didn't honestly know if I would ever be able to have a professional career because of this injury. And by, pass I feel by passing the test and being like, Oh, okay. No, like I still got it. And you know, sometimes things work a little wonky, but for the most part, my brain works well now. Um, yeah. Oh, well, I'm happy. I'm here for all the wonky brains because mine doesn't work in the right way either. <laughs> She's lost her Apple Pencil like at least 50 times in the last 10 years. <laughs> but I think one of the big memories that I like have from that time is one, Casey was the golden student and asked all of the great questions that I was like, Annoying. Be honest. Was she annoying? <laughs> no, no. But I think that I. And he's way too nice. She wouldn't say it. No, I, I was. I probably helped you. Oh, right, totally. Andy? Yeah, because I, I feel like um, if my brain would have been working correctly, I probably would have been right there with her, tag teaming all of those questions. Um, and I just didn't have that in me. So I was like, yeah, Casey just like had me. 
one for the yeah. team. Good. I love it. <laughs> love it. So, wow. Okay. Look at us now. That's so look at us now. Because now story. together, and I mean, and by the way, everyone at Steady Notes who like, there's, there's an interesting story because we are working together with Angie now. And there's enough foreplay here. Like, this is getting like a little too much foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> to the point that, like, when are we getting to it that now we're working together with angie on something amazing that she reached out about and so everyone that's on the team has either been a student or involved in some way that it was never a plan of like oh hey we're gonna work together while the fight it just happened and so i there really is like there's never been like a oh like formal job interview or hiring mm-hmm. system it's mm-hmm. like just it, someone that shows up as like a super special unicorn and like follows through on things and has that magic that yeah we love here it's if it's a natural connection it just grows you know bring it back to episode one trust the feathers instead of the mac truck exactly okay so angie what have you been up to can you tell us what you have been creating yeah um, um over and put your heart and soul and everything in between in jail. So my God, is that the truth? Yes. This has been like a passion project. Um, basically starting a little bit into the pandemic to now. Um, I realized through my own personal journey through supervision and now to the point. So I, I'm, I teach at a university and I teach a capstone class in supervision So I'm in contact with a lot of students and the overarching thing is students don't know what is expected in supervision um, when it comes to their documentation and what they should be taught because they're putting all the trust in their supervisor. And so I have developed Tracker, which is going to basically be your golden ticket to what the fuck should you be doing in supervision? Um, when it comes to your documentation, I think that's the biggest question, um, because it kind of has the biggest risk in it. So if you don't have accurate documentation and heaven forbid you get audited, um, by the board that you got to have something to provide to them. So you don't lose all those hours and tracker is going to solve that for you. You don't have to think about, oh my gosh, do I have everything, um, accurate or completed for every log that I have entered. Tracker just ensures that you know these are required. These are not required. Um, In addition, you kind of keep track of all the task list topics that you're learning in supervision because that's another huge pain point for students of not having enough exposure to the entire task list. So you literally are keeping data on yourself um, and have a lovely um, little permanent product grid of what what have you done, when have you done it across the entire task list. So hopefully, how many times have you done it? It, yes. it literally shows like changes color if it's like zero to yep. three, three. Like I'm not sure. Exactly yeah, you got exactly. yourself a little mastery criteria in there. Um, and the key thing is as you kind of move through supervision. Um, you collect all of those hours and then eventually get to studying for your exam. We like hoping that you come to the collective and you've got that grid filled out and you're ready to be a Casey in the class and asking all those questions um, and prepared. And you, I think one of the biggest messages I would say to anyone listening that's going through hours, as Angie said, that supervisees don't know what they yeah. need is that you have to be accountable for your own supervision. Can I just backtrack this for one second? Mm-hmm. I just want to, for anyone listening who's like, I'm thinking of going into the field of ABA. Like, what is this supervision you're speaking of? Okay, so just like to like even back it up even further. Yeah. Okay, so like you're maybe an RBT, maybe a behavior technician, and you're like, you know what? I want to pursue ABA. I could see this as being cool. I want to be a BCBA, a board certified behavior analyst, or I want to be a BCABA board certified assistant behavior analyst right and so you start going let's let's just take the the graduate school track for a bcba and you start going to your classes and as casey said when you're in that grad school program you have to start accruing hours okay now just on top of it 
to be nice, the BACB, our credentialing board, make some changes every now and then. You know, back when I was studying, it had to be 1,500 hours. Now it's 2,000. Then they'll do some like nice complicated shit like, well, guess what? 5% needs to be this, but not if it's this. And this is going to count as a restricted activity, but this one won't. And this one's going to be like, I mean, the calculations are like, honestly, unless I talk with Angie about it, I still like, I don't trust myself to answer anyone's questions because it is, they're changing it all the time and like the requirements it's so specific. Like you could think you did all your hours correctly. Like 2000 hours, a lot of hours, right? And then you could find out that like half of them didn't count. But also as specific as it is, it's also very mm, vague. Exactly. And that and that's what I mean. Issue. I'm saying it's so specific what you need, but in terms of the requirements of what falls under each is so yeah. vague and it's so subjective to your supervisor and what they deem unrestricted or restricted or like there's very basic bullets of what it is. And there's like no clear task analysis of how to do it. So it's very, it's an intricate, like also while you're getting supervision, you're in your master's program, I bet you you're working full time and you probably have a family or your own life that you want to, you know, maintain (laughs) some kind of balance. So Supervision is so hard in a lot of companies. Yeah. And a lot of companies don't offer it or don't have enough staff to even provide it. So then you're looking at remote supervision and what does remote supervision look like? Because then you're depending on Zoom and, you know, trying to meet with your supervisor. It could be different time zones. And with this tracker, it allows your supervisor to also have access to it. I'm not sure if you said that, Angie, but your supervisor also can log into yep. it and and keep up with everything so it's like a a dual system you both get access to it and you work together in it and they could flag things if they think maybe you know uh, i don't know if we did enough on this so let's flag this and work on this or yep okay your hours look good or oh no we didn't do those let's do those and then when you sign off you've both had that kind of trustworthy measurement together where all right that final like verification signature is you can trust it and and with that something that is so big is the idea that i remember when i took my exam and it came to studying like the supervision parts right of supervision which still i mean you love was, teaching it, it was always <laughs> just confusing because like okay what's in the cooper book i understand i need to know that but there was never like a clear like It's like, oh, well, this is a good resource, I guess. This is, but when I was learning things about supervision, I learned them when I was studying, meaning I had already finished my hours. It was the kind of shit that I was like, well, it would have been nice to know this before I started getting them. (laughs) Like before I started getting my hours and understanding like what supervision should look like or what is required of supervision. Like, okay, cool that my supervisor is willing just to sign off for me. And you're like, you might think that while you're going through, you're like, oh, I got a six supervisor. She's like not checking that hard. She's willing to sign off for me. You think in that moment you're winning, right? Like, yeah, but you're really just cheating yourself. <laughs> when you, <laughs> so when it comes time for the test, you're like, I don't know anything. When you are now the BCBA in charge of individuals care, you're literally like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? So like that supervision in that moment, let's say you have someone or oftentimes this is so like delayed discounting. Yes, that's what I was saying. And and these BCBAs also have like competing contingencies, right? Like mm-hmm. as a BCBA, I know when I was in a clinic, I had to see clients, mm-hmm. right? I had to train RBDs or different things, do parent training. And then I was supposed to be supervising and I know I was not able to give quality supervision because I had so many other things to do. So it really does depend on the supervisee knowing like essentially their rights or what they should expect as well. And that's what this tracker does do. So, I mean, first of all, Angie, I commend you because thank you. You, the best product created or when you're solving a a problem right (laughs) like when is an mo so like even study notes aba like i 
didn't mean to be solving a problem, but like studying is a problem for people. It's it's hard. This one, supervision, oh, there's definitely an MO there. But I would be way too scared to touch it on my own. That is very brave of you. So I really commend you because that is like reading the, the small print. For sure. Well, and taking a lot of responsibility off other people and, you know, trusting that you're keeping up to speed and that everything is up to date and taking a lot of um, stress off others, but onto your own, um, what's the word where you're detailed? Accuracy? Nah. Organized? Whatever you're taking it on to point is you're taking it on to yourself, like the responsibility, the yeah. load. Of well, like, I hey. have a question though. Yeah. So one of the things that um, I remember during my supervision was back when I had to use paper, this one form and keep them all. And I, I did end up like putting them into my Google drive. Mm -hmm. So I had them all saved, but I still, I honestly don't know if I can even find them because I don't work for that company and that email's gone and I have no idea, but like, and your supervisor needs a copy of them too. Right. So like, does Tracker, is that an, like an option that Tracker has? Yep. So I think lots of things. Um, yes. Tracker basically retains your documents for the seven years. So that's re the requirement by the board is that you and your supervisor have those docs for seven years. And yeah, when it was pen and paper, I knew people that like, left them in like a locked safe i also scammed mine yeah it's a fireproof safe I bought one uh huh oh my god of course i did <laughs> um i have only heard of a couple people that have been audited in the seven year stint but like you don't want that to be you and the best thing is you could just have that uploaded into the cloud it lives there heaven forbid four years after you pass your exam you hear from the board and they're like, hey, show us the documents from January to July 2024. And you can provide that because you can just download it from the website. I'm having a Are you like freaking about your you're like, where are they? I like literally <laughs> like, Am I reaching my fifth year? Yeah. I like literally am like when you said like I don't know in my Google Drive where to find them, I'm like, do you think I know where in my Google Drive? <laughs> We'll look after. I'll make sure we find them. <laughs> Good. I, like, hey, maybe your I supervisor just... has them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they uh -huh. do. Uh-huh. Moving on. But so I... I no, go ahead. I mean... Oh, now I'm stressed. <laughs> okay, keep going. Keep going. So you had talked about kind of like the requirements like ever-changing and... Yeah, that's that's real. Like there's um I think it's typically four times a year they send out like their newsletter and there's always some little small detail for supervision. Tracker stays up to date on that. Um and even I think you'd given the example of like now it's two thousand hours. It's actually two thousand hours and still fifteen hundred hours. But the most confusing part Which is there's like some complicated math equation between those two numbers. And the system just does that for you. Nobody has to do manual math in order to ensure that their hours are accurate. Because at the time of this recording, yeah. okay, we like our podcast to be evergreen, but science changes, the BACB changes. Right now, what are the current mm -hmm. requirements for someone listening? So right now we say, okay, you need 2,000 hours. Of those hours... Okay, so... And here's the best part is actually when you sign into Tracker and log your hours, those requirements, there's a cute little box on the side where you're tracking your hours. They're constantly stagnant there for you. So you know that you're meeting the requirements. Um, so basically there's, there's two different tracks that you can complete. It's either supervised or supervised concentrated. And supervised concentrated, the 1500 hours, where the supervised is going to be the 2,000 hours. And that 5% that you kind of gave, the 5% supervision is going to be for the 2,000 hours, where you have to get 10% of your hours supervised if you're going to be in the concentrated version. 
The other like variation is uh, concentrated. You have to have a minimum of six contacts with your supervisor, where supervised you have to have a minimum of four contacts. And in those contacts, it's like, okay, well, my supervisor came to my in-home session. That's a contact. Um, I had a meeting with my Uh supervisor. That's a contact. And you have to, for both of them, you have to have a minimum of one observation. And the period of time is per month that they record this, even though it's that grand total of the 2,000 or the 1,500. And you have to have, I mean, the list is like ongoing. I feel like everybody's probably like, okay, now I'm totally confused. I need the visual. Um, A minimum of 50% of- You're you're actually, you don't mean to, but unintentionally, you're building the MO of why you need this tracker. I mean- you literally lost me at the first number you said. <laughs> um, I'm listening. I literally feel like if you're talking in like web mm-hmm. dings. Remember that font that would pop up on computers like before we had like yeah. Apple web dings? Yeah. Like I literally yeah. am like, yeah, 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 totally. Well, and I think the point is it is that. And I, it literally also feels like parts of it. I'm like, is the BACV trying to trick us when they're like, well, technically it could be 2000 unrestricted. Or, but, but it can't be this. But it's like forty percent yeah. restricted. I don't know. I'm I, pulling numbers I, out I, of my I can't. Head. No, yeah, those, those are real don't. numbers. And it, and so so the restricted and unrestricted is like a huge question that I feel like so many of my students have. And this is where it like comes back on the supervisor. Supervisor gets to say if it goes into one category or the other. And the board in their handbook states typically what's categorized as restricted and what's categorized as unrestricted the best part is like in tracker we have these cute little question marks that will like remind you as you're tracking every single thing like what does this actually mean hashtag prompt prompt Uh (laughs) um and i i think that the overarching thing is when students start grad school and then they also have to start supervision, it's like you're learning the science of ABA and you're also trying to learn how to be supervised. Nobody has time for that. And so that's really kind of the hope with Tracker is we're just, we got you. The snap, but I, <laughs> I try to do it in a lot. Like when I do something cool, like it's a, like, you know, like people, like, their hand hits, makes it, it snap makes alone. Away. But, like, now I don't even have full-on fingers. Like, it takes away from, like, the <laughs> slapping ability. The, the sound that's supposed to make. But, okay, something I want to get to is I like to assume everyone in our field is really nice and ethical and sweet and all that. However, I have heard of a few BCBA holes in my day. Um, and with that, I've heard, like, literal – terror stories of supervision Mm -hmm. meaning like i've heard of bcvas one day being the supervisor one day being like okay sorry i'm no longer signing off on your hours they go missing you get ghosted not just by people on hinge also by supervisors what about danielle's story she shares it in class it's the most craziest like she did all of her hours but didn't watch some video that was required at the time so they were all like canceled all of them, all 1,500. Then she started them again, and the board said, oh, the video is no longer necessary, but they weren't going to give her back all those hours. So she did her hours twice, 3,000 hours. So... Because one tiny, tiny, was like, this. Um, hey, Tracker solves that problem, so you're not like Danielle. When your supervisor signs up on Tracker... We ask them, when did you take your eight-hour supervision course to make sure that that box is already checked for you? Because you do not want to be in that situation because it's so, so shitty. And, like, think about the – It's a bad thing. It costs so much money. So much money and so much time. Most of the time, it takes somebody 18 months to 24 months to finish supervision. Like, and that's like fast track. Like you are just hitting max hours per month. You're just go, 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 go. And so to think that. Yeah, mine took me over. You lose two. Mine took me over two. Yeah, over two years. Because I took. 
time. Like, oh my God. And I just, I'm so Liat in every capacity. Like I'd be like asking someone else. I remember asking Jordan at the time because Jordan was already like, she already submitted and whatever. I was like, can you give me your organization sheet that you use, like your Excel thing? Then I'd be like, oh, hers is too complex. We still work together and her shit's still too complex for me. <laughs> so then like I asked someone else and eventually I'm like, how am I going to do this? Like, it was just like, if this option was there for me, like it wouldn't even be a question. I mean, I, I think when it comes to supervision stories, oh my gosh, I have weight. Give, a, give us a terrible story. Give yeah. us, let's, you know, Halloween is not too long ago. Let's, let's hear a freaky. Okay. Wow. So I had a student um, who finished his hours uh it must have been january of this year and his um supervisor filled out monthly forms for him he had all of his documents ducks in a row and all of a sudden supervisor um, accused him of making an unethical decision at his place of employment and refused to continue supervising with him. Here's the like shocker. The unethical decision was that he attended a meeting that he was invited to that she wasn't a part of. And he lost. Sounds like ego. Uh, huh? He lost his job. He I love when Angie says, uh-huh. <laughs> he lost I love when his you- job. Um, obviously his supervision and the the absolute kicker in the story, one, she turned him into the board um, for the ethical violation. And he had to write almost a 50-page document defending himself that he had met the board standard. So he came to me and said, okay, you're an expert in supervision. I need you to basically help me argue my case. And here's the best part. The board found that her um accusation towards him was unfounded he did not breach any ethical violation and it does she get a time for that she didn't really get any kind of slap on the hand except um Karma. it's like recorded i guess now at the board but she refused to sign his final verification form for him to be able to sit for the exam and like that's where like the whole oh my gosh I had all these hours but this person's refusing to sign my final verification form over a meeting. And anyways, after the board did all of their research, the super formal intense process that he had to participate in came back and she was unfounded. She had to sign the final verification form. He passed his test I think 2 months ago um yay. yay i'm sure he's he better but i think that i mean i have also heard of people that um think that they're documenting their hours correctly and they're going to their supervisor to say hey am i interpreting the expectations of the board via the handbook correctly the supervisor looks at their tracking document and says, like, yep, everything looks great. They go to apply for their exam. They end up getting audited. And the board says, wow, actually, the way that you track these hours, you didn't um, include the setting of the hours. So one small detail. But the person knows, like, oh, well, I was in home. That's, like, what my setting was. But because in, the, in their um, system, they didn't include it. The board says null and void. These hours don't count, and you don't get like a a do over. I'm having like yeah. a stomach ache. Also, the one other thing is I also do. I'm like, like the the other thing is is that with supervision, which I always found so frustrating, and even like in like the Instagram messages and stuff that we get, like, which also kind of frustrates me as a as a field being that like we pride ourselves on being technological and like clear and like that there's no way that if a PCBA writes instructions how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich someone's gonna mess up because we're supposed to be like so technological yet I just like and people will come to us like on the study notes ABA Instagram and be like 
hey, like I have this supervision question. Like I started my hours this, blah, 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 my supervisor. And it's like, there really is, it feels like there's no place to look. So we we always tell them like, hey, also because again, I said you're ballsy, you know, for like, like I'm like, I don't want to take the responsibility of telling you the wrong yeah. thing. It, What's your answer to them? I want to know if ours are different. I'll be like, well, what's the question? Like, well, anyway, okay. I, I will say like always like, hey, first of all, I would talk to your own supervisor about this. Um, but also, I recommend reaching out to the board for like the final verdict because- And then do you get back, I did ask my supervisor and they don't know. It's like, oh my God. Like uh, I then, then I did like, honestly, I don't want to be involved. I say the board you. always. Like I'm like, but the problem is the board is like dealing with so much stuff. It's They barely get back to you. They're like not great at answering their phones. Yes. They're delayed. So it's like, that that it creates like a further, like a a more of a friction experience in trying to get your hours. So, um, and I I think I see. I, I mean, I obviously like as a BCBA, I see the BCBA's perspective, but then I just have this huge like soft spot for students, and yeah. like one like I really in, enjoy teaching and connecting with people, but I also really love watching people succeed. And here's here's like the easy solution is just use tracker and it's going to like be the user manual of what you need to do, um, both for the supervisor, because I think oftentimes the supervisor is like, OK, I'm like stretched so thin, like you had already said this of. I've got like my caseload. I've got to do parent training. Oh, and I have to like supervise people. Like how the hell am I doing three jobs? And Tracker just ensures that everybody kind of knows one, what the expectation is and that they're doing the same thing. And as well as when you're the supervisor, I mean, obviously like we're saying like you have these risks when you're the supervisee, like if your hours don't count, if blah, blah, blah. But when you are the supervisor, it falls on your license. So if there's something wrong going on there, like if I'm, let's say I was supervising Casey, right? And like she was doing something unethical, like signing fake hours and I just like wasn't really looking it over and I was just mm-hmm. signing it, like it would come back to me. So like yeah. it's in my best interest as well as a supervisor to recommend yes. this uh, because when push, it's not only the supervisee who get screwed, it's also like, I mean, I know as a BCBA, a common fear is like, like one of my biggest fears is like, oh my God, what if I don't get my CEUs in on time? And like, that could lose my license. Like that's like, cause mm-hmm. like you have such trauma for taking the test, yeah. you know? You're like, I have never wanted mm-hmm. to do that again. Um, and so something like that, you're like, well, I don't want to like, so it might also be something that's stopping people from wanting to supervise. Yeah. Cause they're like, I just don't even want to take the risk of signing off. Like if, but this is like, it is not gonna like what I like about the tracker is it's not gonna let you like move forward if you don't have yeah. the required parts in there. It's like, oh well, okay. Yeah. Something like my location. Like, you're gonna have to put it. You're gonna have yeah. to put the hours. If the hours you put in don't make sense, it's not gonna let you submit it. Right. So it's it's putting in all these safeguards. Yes, ahead of time, which is it's so important for both the and supervisor and, and super- yep, and supervisor and supervisee. And as someone in the test prep space. I love that it is holding the supervisee and the supervisor responsible to make sure the ca- the candidate is being exposed to different parts of the task list, whether it's like, you know, make sure you're talking about these concepts or making sure like if you're learning about an FA that like you've provided the candidate or the supervisee, sorry, an opportunity to, um, you know, practice doing an FA or conducting an FA. Um, because if you're just like getting together for supervision, like you may not be thinking like, oh, this is important or this is, you know, it's like, it's making, it's holding you accountable to well, that. Sometimes you get huge. in supervision and you just, it becomes like a major just like bitch session or like vent session. And you're not really focusing on that task list like you should be. And so it really does. I love that where it's like, all right, you can redirect and get back on task and be like, all right, we can absolutely have like an open conversation about what's going on with your client, but let's really focus on like the behavioral skills that we're working on for you as a clinician, for your client's best outcomes. Um, we need to practice these things. 
I could like I can't like agree with any of this more. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the great thing I think uh-huh. from the supervisor's lens is under like when you sign in as the supervisor, you are um, reviewing and approving all of the logs that your trainee has submitted. So really, it's going to decrease that there's any confusion or discrepancy at the end of the month when that final verification form has to be signed. And that's protecting everybody in that situation. The other thing that I, and I actually hadn't even thought about this, Casey, but when you are like tracking your um, opportunities within the task list, If let's say one month, yeah, I don't know, things in life are fucking hard because they're going to be. Um, You can actually look like on your task list grid as a monthly view versus an overall view. So you can see like, okay, how many task list topics did I um, or opportunities did I have in the month of October versus like what I'm doing in November? And I would see from a supervisor's perspective, like you could set monthly goals of, you know, next month. We're going to ensure that you have at least 10 opportunities across task list topics. Okay, this month, like we're super pushing it. We're going to do at least 15. Um, and it's again, it, it's trying to like be this like uh, shining like north light for supervision of just do what we're saying to do. And it's going to make the process easier for the supervisor. And it's absolutely going to make the process easier um, for the trainee. So something I want to add in here, unless I wasn't like upfront about this, I didn't not mean to, but, um, and that like, I, I think I said it briefly, but at SNABA here at Study Notes ABA, we partnered with Angie on this. We have a lot of people come up to us, which I mean, is such a blessing. That's like, people think we're cool enough to like, want to like bring ideas over to us. And we've had people in this area bring I like ideas to us before on different things, um, there's other things out there, but when we looked at Angie's, we're like, okay, nothing compares to this. Like, this is like, we have to be a part of this. And so, first of all, I mean, the the product itself is amazing, but I'm also a huge component of like the person behind something. And because that shines within everything that you have done as well. And so um, I remember like putting different products side by side, like looking what you did and, you know, other products out there and being like, whoa, this is sick. So are there some things that you could tell us that are different or that stands out? I mean, I could say it, but I'd rather allow you the time to do it. Um, That makes trackers stand out. Like when looking for a way to um, track all your supervision hours. Well, thank you for the sweet compliment. Um, I'm like so excited for like Tracker to be branded as Snaba. Like you'll see when you um, check us out, fieldworktracker.com, that um, we've got Pavlov hanging out on every page and it's super cute. And I don't know. I feel like it's just like a very like cheery um, website. The key things that are going to separate us from the primary competitor, and many people are utilizing them currently because they were free for a long time. Now they're charging. People don't really like that. Um, I mean, I think the big thing is like we're super transparent. We're going to be upfront that you will absolutely check us out. We'll give you seven day free trial. Um, And then we have kind of a, a couple different opportunities of how you want to do your subscription with us, whether you're going to be monthly yearly we think the lifetime is like the easiest subscription just pay once and be done with it um the other like i think big pieces are around like helping you be as audit proof as possible we suggest um when you are doing your monthly verification forms and your final verification forms and you'll see this on the website that you're going to the BACB's website and basically it'll it'll show you how to do all this Um, you'll be taking the forms directly from their website, one, to ensure that you're using the correct one um, and that we're not like making our own form and saying you should use that, like use what the board's giving you. You don't want to screw that up. 
Um, the other like huge thing that we have that nobody else has is we're teaching you how to um, participate within the task list through a number of opportunity opportunities throughout supervision. Um, and nobody that, else is that doing that. My, that is my favorite, favorite, favorite thing because again, and you know I love colors and I love visuals and it literally – puts it into like, okay, I have not, it, and then it's also not a shock when uh, I know from the beginning for a lot of people of like, as soon we get a messages on Instagram all the time, also like, Hey, I'm signing up for grad school. When should I start studying? <laughs> like, cause people hear about this big, bad test. Mm -hmm. And, and usually my response is like, focus on grad school right now. Do the best you can. Just keep your head above water. We've got you when the time comes, but I'm excited to like, you know, we, we really want to be able to offer like best solutions for things. So I'm excited to be like, hey, listen, right now you're in grad school. When you're tracking your hours, make sure that you're using the the task list component in there because it, that's going to make sure that you're these things that you're learning about, like boring in the textbook in grad school, that you're making sure that you're actually having exposure to them and using them. Like you'll be even a stronger uh, candidate when it comes time to take our test prep. Yeah, so that's like exposing themselves to that task list during their grad program through supervision when they get to us to study. It's not this like, what is G25? Mm -hmm. Like, and and I think they'll have been like, oh. um, so often you're just like, oh gosh, well, I hope when I got to the end of the supervision experience, I learned everything I need. I think that's like a big question that I get in the capstone class that I teach of. Um, I don't think that I've learned enough through supervision and this grid literally will tell you because you're keeping the data on yourself. How much, how many opportunities did you have in task list A2 per month and oh, in your overall experience? Um, basically we, we've like set the mastery criteria as 10 opportunities per task list topic. So, and hey, it's going to be cute and pink at the end if you get to 10 opportunities um, through every single topic. But, like, that's what you're going for. It, especially, like, if you're doing this for a minimum of two years, like, that's really not that challenging. But then it puts, um, I think, a little bit of structure for the supervisor to know, like, okay, I've only, like, um, started to expose this person to an F.A., and they've had two opportunities. I've got eight more opportunities that I need to provide them while we're doing supervision together. And I, I think that it just really helps both parties know what should we be doing. And also as a supervisor, I just want to add in that like, let's say you have multiple supervisees, you could see them yes. all on there. So like that another cool way is I'm thinking like if you're working at a clinic, right? And you're like, hey, I have this... Um, you know, I'm about to be doing a um, multiple stimulus without replacement um, preference assessment. Let me look up which of my candidates don't really have exposure in that area on their task list. So like, I'm going to definitely bring in, um, sorry, I'm going to bring in Toby on that, you know, because you could like look and be like, okay, well, wow, Casey's had like 10 exposures to that already. That's not going to, but this is an opportunity because you could actually see it all in one place, which is huge, right? Like to be like, um, that's huge. I think that's a, a big one to be able to look at it in one mm -hmm. place. And well, and I, I think the other like thing that I really like about the grid is like you can hover over every single topic and like you'll see like, OK, maybe we all don't memorize what the task list topics were, um, but you're going to like see the title and then you're going to see every specific date that that person was exposed to it. And maybe like, yeah, it's preference assessments and this person hasn't had any preference success preference assessment um, exposure this year and like all of their dates are in you know 2022 okay well I need to make sure that I'm providing them the opportunity and it allows you don't have to like shuffle through papers to like find these answers like it's just a click click there's the information I'm like so excited about this me too I know when I started supervising I literally bought like every single like supervision curriculum mm -hmm. book and like all of them were like 
I, I just honestly felt like a lot of it like just created like more work for me being like, oh, and this like, well, like this is like buy so... a book and then you're just not maybe going to use it. Right. This is just like, okay, here's exactly what's missing. Like you want to change that color on that? Right. <laughs> there you go. Um, but Angie, again, I'm, I'm so, so, so excited yeah. like for us to be able to be a part of this and Solving tell everyone problem. in the world about it. And I could tell you guys that the amount of work that Angie's put into it. Like we have met her for definitely over a year. I mean, how long now? I'm not even sure with like all the updates. I mean, the- I think that we're we're about a, a year and a half into this. I The biggest thing that I learned in like being a BCBA, turning um, my career into the tech space and like literally knowing nothing about code. Uh, holy shit, has it been a learning process? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even from any tech stuff we've done on our app or our website, it's it's always yeah, a bitch. Totally. <laughs> There's no way around it. But it's just going to be perfect and shiny and um, and really just like user friendly. Like that is my thing. Like I want it to be as intuitive as possible. People don't have a lot of time, and the reality is, especially like when we were going over like what's the expectations for supervision you can get lost in the weeds really fast. And I, you don't have to, like, it doesn't have to be that complicated. And Tracker is a truly like simple website to use. Um, And it's intuitive. And if you don't know, the best thing is there's all these little cute um, question mark bubbles that you just click on and it just tells you. Angie, where can someone find this Secret. Uh, fieldworktracker.com. Fieldworktracker.com. Does. Go check it out. And Angie, thank you. So excited. Casey, thank you. Thank you, Leah. You're amazing. Oh, thank you for Bye, having friend. me. I, I'm just so excited to be doing this together. All right. Thanks, guys. As always, you know where to find us. You can find us on Instagram at Behavior Bitches Podcast, Facebook at Behavior Bitches Podcast, our website, behaviorbitches.com. You can reach out to us there, send us comments, say nice things, tell if you want to be a guest, if you want a topic, if you know of an amazing guest, anything. We love to hear from you. It really keeps us going. And you know what we love even more? Five star reviews. Five star reviews on the Apple Podcast app. You could listen to us anywhere. However, we obviously, Matching Law, love Apple Podcasts more because there's an option to leave a five star review. So please leave it for us. And that's all we have for you today. As always, love ya. Mean it. <laughs>